By 1943, Bomber Command was fighting the war with an even greater ferocity. It was dropping more and more bombs. But German industry didn't appear to be collapsing. After a while, people began to suspect that factories could be repaired and got working again fairly quickly. Um, so the next point of vulnerability was actually seen to be the workers. And this is the beginning of the sinister thought that actually the real target is civilian workers. Uh, the term used to describe this policy was de-housing. The aim was not just to blow up, it was to burn as well. Bomber Command was now dropping more incendiaries than high explosives. In July 1943, Harris used this lethal cocktail to devastating effect. Hamburg, second largest city of the Reich, is being liquidated in a series of record attacks by the RAF. The main attack started on Saturday, the 24th of July, and for nights afterwards, hundreds of our four-engine bombers kept it up hot and strong. We're traveling to Hamburg to find out more about the impact of the raid. A number of factors made this attack so shattering. RAF deception diverted the German night fighters away from the bomber force, and the elite pathfinders marked the target perfectly. The combination of a hot, dry summer and the high proportion of incendiaries created a phenomenon never seen before, a firestorm. Temperatures reached 800 degrees, winds 150 miles an hour. Nadia Convery is a Hamburg resident and researcher. She's brought us to St. Nicholas Church. It was so prominent in the landscape that the RAF used it as a naming point. Today, it's a memorial to those lost in the bombing. God. That's unbelievable, isn't it, the destruction? The blockbuster bombs, they were dropped first to sort of lift the roofs of the houses, and then they would drop the incendiary bombs into, into houses where um, there was a lot of wood inside. They would just go up in flames, and uh, the streets were quite narrow, so it was easy for the fire to spread. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and that was that was the, um, that was the aim. Was to that set was fire the aim, to... and um, apparently the British uh, researched into to how flammable uh, German cities were. In one area, ninety six percent of the houses were were completely gone, mm. destroyed. The Nazis feared six more raids like it would finish the war. Forty two thousand men, women, and children were killed quite an eye-opener, really, when you see those pictures and you see the endless, endless empty shells of buildings and the tons and tons of rubble. I just keep thinking about families and children and trying to get, you know, as a parent, trying to get your kids out of that hell hole must have been beyond awful, you know. Nadia has invited us to a city centre hotel to meet some of the victims of the Hamburg firestorm. Hello, hello. Hans Werner Prell was 13 at the time. Hello. Colin. Helga Hunter was 16. Very nice to meet you. Hello. The story of this, this suitcase is a special one, actually. Um, so in this, in this suitcase were important documents, a bit of you know, jewellery. That's, that's all that remained. Mm. It's the only thing he saved. Yeah. He was clutching it mm. through the firestorm. And then we have a fürchterlich, fürchterlich, it was an arcane. They could hardly move because of the, the force of the winds. And so he's, he's described it quite powerfully. He said there was this red wall coming towards him and then they'd get pushed over and he'd have to get up again and try and sort of battle mm. against that force. Mm. So, so that's yeah, quite a powerful image. Mm -hmm. um, he says that uh, just, just as you're sitting next to me, um, 
people would would go up in flames next to him. Mm. It's unimaginable. It's just what mm. he saw. It's just yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I was uh, at 16 at that time, yeah. that night. Can I speak German? Of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ich habe dann gemerkt, dass alles brannte, alles kaputt war und die Bomben alles zerstört hatten. Aber the streets had been hit mm. and it was, you know, everything had gone up in flames. Mm. And so walking home, she had to pick her way across, uh, you know, people lying in the streets, dead, dead bodies. Mm. Mm. Because of the intense heat, the tarmac melted, and she saw people trying to walk across and getting stuck, and then yeah, not being able to, to free themselves. No one else could help because they would get stuck then mm. too. I think when you read about the area bombing campaign and how that was described by senior officers and what have you. And there's ways that you can phrase it to sound like it's not the indiscriminate bombing of civilians. You know, you can justify it in words by um, you know, saying that it's a legitimate tactic to you know, damage the industrial might of the country you're fighting against. I don't know if you can ever justify one way or the other. You know, you can't say, you know, well, there's a statistic there's 42,000 civilians killed here in a week in Hamburg uh, in one raid. You can't ever kind of justify that. You can't ever justify the killing of innocent people. You can't justify the killing of six million Jews and homosexuals in concentration camps either, extermination camps. But it's not really about that, I suppose. It's just trying to understand, trying to understand it. it what it took to ultimately defeat that evil. Yeah, and that's him, yeah, yeah. And 70 years ago, things were very different. 